Hello, today I want to talk about wolf intervals and a chord that is impossible to tune. It's not so uncommon to hear musicians dismiss just intonation and unequal temperaments precisely because they create wolf intervals. So what are wolf intervals and how do they create impossible chords? This is the wolf interval. No, not that. Wolf interval is a fourth or a fifth that is either sharp or flat of pure tuning. This can also include ninths and seconds since they are related by fourth. So in just intonation, we have the lesser whole tone, the smaller whole tone, 10 over nine which as we'll see is one of the major culprits of why there are wolf intervals in just intonation. Now, I know what you're thinking. These intervals don't sound very nice and it's not very fair to call them wolf intervals. I mean, wolves are beautiful creatures and I'm sure musically they sing really well and don't sound anything like these totally out of tune intervals. Anyway, what a lot of people don't realize about wolf intervals is that they are a feature of the sonic and tonal world. They are a property of nature, of the overtone series, and is ultimately rooted in the irregularity of the prime series, of primeness in general. And primeness creates qualitative diversity in the tonal space. It also has a unique patterning of its movement. Their movements diverge and interfere. They cause what is called harmonic entropy, but each unique note interval pattern of sound, vibrational relation, has a unique qualitative feel to it. So how does prime divergence cause a sort of harmonic impasse whereby we cannot avoid wolf intervals. Well, that's where the impossible chord comes in. What is the impossible chord? It's a uh, nine major nine with a six with a six major six. Here it is in equal temperament. So why is this tuning impossible? This sounds totally possible to me, I'm hearing it. Well, it's not in tune. Here's how that works. Well, when we tune the 9 chord in just intonation, we can get it completely in tune by stacking fifths and pure thirds. That gives us a tuning lattice in the following way. Going on this axis, we have the major third. And on this axis, we have the fifth, three over two. And we can move in that. What the hell is going on? Stacking fifths in this direction. Okay, stacking fifths in that direction. Cool. And from the major third, we can move. We can move up and down a fifth from the third, is that what you're saying? On the axis of the fifth here. Okay, wow, you're just saying there's two chains of fifths offset by a major third. And so we can form the chord with the following intervals. A major third, fifth, the seven, major seven, the nine, and the sixth, the major sixth. There it is, an octave reduced form. Octave reduced, got it. Now, what is wrong with this chord? Well, it involves a wolf interval, and you might not hear it at first, but when I isolate it, it is much more obvious. It's between the nine over eight and the major sixth interval, five over three. We can also see here that the edges of the lattice 
this have diverged in their tonal space so that the 9 over 8 is formed through this stacking of fifths while the 5 over 3 is found by going up a major third and then down a fifth. So that gives us two perfectly tuned intervals that are out of tune with each other. So what is this interval? Well, it just so happens to be 40 over 27. The inversion of this interval, 27 over 20, is found in the harmonic series between the 27th and the 20th. The 20 is, of course, reducible to 5, so the major third, while the 27 is 3 times 3, so 9 times 3. So what can we do? We have this in tune second or 9 chord. And that is based on the whole number ratios, 8, 9, 10, 12, 15, or in the higher position, 8, 10, 12, 15, 18. We can, of course, put a 27 in, in an attempt to remedy the relation between the second and the sixth by making it a pure fifth, only to have the inversion of this very same interval pop up now between the third and the sixth. Well, only one option remains, which is to drop our second down to be a fifth below the pure sixth of five over three. I think this might be my favorite version of the chord yet. I think it kind of holds the dissonance in the middle and balance. That wolf interval placed in that whole context. Well, let's be a little scientific and compare them. I'll keep doing exactly what I just did, starting with the wolf interval and then having the context come in. So in the end, it's really how do you want to hide your dissonances? And we can think about this almost in terms of voicing, although it is another dimension of voicing itself. And we will imagine that each of these places where we put the didymic comma, where we put this syntonic comma, where we adjust the interval, that is always going to have unique voicings to the chord that accentuate the consonances and dissonances. So when we move the wolf interval from one spot in the chord to another spot in the chord and enhance certain of the harmonics and increase certain amount of dissonance as well, but in different places and emphasizing different notes in the chord. In some sense, musical harmony always involves some element of hiding the dissonances within consonances, and weaving together consonants and dissonance, contrasting them and building on the difference and contrast that comes out and also comes back to something consonant and stable. And one last wolf interval I just want to mention before ending is the 21st harmonic. I have made videos about this interval. It is a severely flat fourth, 30 cents flat. And 
I find it whimsical. I find it lovely. I think that there is ways to use a severely wolf flatted forth. If you think about the wolf interval that arises between five limit and three limit that we've been talking about for the majority of this video, the stretching is to diminish the fifth, which inversely means extending the fourth. So it's a sharp fourth in everything we were looking at before. This is the opposite. This is a very flat fourth. So that means that it corresponds to a very sharp fifth. And they have a different character to the five limit wolf intervals. They are softer, less intense. They're still very dissonant sounding. And if we use this interval with the nine over eight whole tone, we get this septimal minor chord. So this will give chord a very unique flavor. Much more mournful. And that's the way that this interval is voiced in the harmonic series. And so this voicing is gives a certain flavor to the interval. And we can place this interval in other places within tonal space. through in the scale, its dissonance accentuates that movement. And really there are an infinite number of ways to revoice, to recontextualize these intervals, and that will have a different emotional effect in that context. I don't think the wolf interval is a problem, it is an opportunity to create a different kind of sound. In medieval and Renaissance European music, Tonal diversity was commonplace up until even the 1800s. Mean tone was an early attempt to, you know, give three limit tuning the middle finger and to introduce a bunch of wolf intervals in order to preserve the pure thirds. Now these are very small micro wolf intervals. Quarter comma mean tone uses a quarter of a syntonic comma, which would be five cents instead of 20 cents. And, you know, using unequal tunings, we figure out the character of each key as musicians, and we can see what sort of distortions there are within the scale, and figure out musically a sort of perspective and feeling and a character unique to it. You know, some keys have wide fifths and wide thirds, and another key is extremely stable and has very precise thirds. So if you move back and forth between these keys, it can have a profound effect on the music. And we know that people like Chopin, for instance, wrote with this in mind. You know, going back and forth between a chord that's shading is more tense because it's using wolf intervals at the right moment and in the perfect way can be a huge factor in a co classical composer's thinking about a certain passage of a song. With the right voicing in the right context, basically any interval, even the most dissonant, can sound good. So the wolf's win and the 12-tone gang heads home. But wait a minute, what about other equal temperaments? Well, 31 closely approximates the septimal comma and allows for us to easily modulate and access septimal intervals, including the septimal wolf fourth. Although it's not a great approximation, it's 7 cents flat. 
21st harmonic. So kinda, but mostly no. And 53 equal temperament gives us the availability to modulate between all of these syntonic commas to move freely between the wolf and the pure fourths and fifths. Now, when we are confronted with the question of the major 9 at 13 chord, we can, again, switch between all of the permutations which we looked at but we cannot do all of them at once, and we can never avoid the wolf interval. Mean tone temperament, it gives you a circle of mean tone fifths, but you never run into the more problematic wolf intervals of the extra wide fifth that is left over when you stack several small ones. Two, we can approximate some septimal intervals. They're not quite on, they're about 10 cents off, sharp, but that lets us do our little fourth. So long live wolf intervals, let's embrace them and figure out how to weave them into more emotionally rich music because they are emotionally rich intervals. Well, I'm going to leave you now with Chopin's E minor prelude in quarter comma mean tone, or actually this is a six comma mean tone, but it still shows the character of certain chords as being more dissonant and others as being more consonant, so listen in close. I mean, really, listen to that second to last chord and then that last chord. One is all wobbly and the next one is totally locked in. 